Hey, shalom everyone, this is Chris Shoemaker, also known as Yehuda ben Shomer, and welcome to the Daily Drosh. Today's Daily Drosh is taken from Proverbs chapter 20, verse 3, and I'm going to be reading from God's Word translation. And it reads, Avoiding a quarrel is honorable. After all, any stubborn fool can start a fight. Wow, how the Word of God contrasts the modern Western world. This is not the line of thinking of the Western world. Avoiding a quarrel is honorable. Not so in the United States and Canada. There's this, uh, you have your reputation to think about. You, you, you don't want to lose face in front of somebody else. And so, you know, if, if you don't uh, finish a quarrel that somebody starts, you're considered weak. You're considered a coward. Uh, you're considered a dimwit. Um, you can't intellectually hold a candle to someone else. Um, you know, and, and if they're the ones who win the argument, then that means that you must be in the wrong somehow. See how backwards it is? See how the enemy has uh, totally uh, flipped the Word of God on its head and does the opposite of what the Word of God says. Avoiding a quarrel is honorable. You know, we think that we have to defend our honor by participating and reciprocating in an argument or a quarrel. When nine times out of ten, the easiest and best and most honorable and wisest thing to do is to walk away because rarely anything uh, uh, ever good comes out of a quarrel. Avoiding a quarrel is honorable, and I like what it says here in the second half of this verse. After all, any stubborn fool can start a fight. Again, it plays on somebody's sense of pride. It plays on somebody's sense of reputation and not losing face. After all, any stubborn fool can start a fight. So anybody can start a fight. And the proverb says in other places that even a foolish person is considered wise if he keeps his mouth shut. Right? Now, I remember um, my daughter, of all people tried to win an argument with me uh, because she wanted to do something that uh, I know that her mother wouldn't approve of. Now, it may have been something that I didn't think was a big deal, but because my wife had a conviction regarding this, you know, thing or activity, we're a team. We're one. And, you know, I'm going to back her up and, and side with her on the issue, even though, to me, it doesn't matter either way. And so my daughter said, you're just agreeing with mom because you're afraid of mom. She was playing on my masculinity, my sense of, of, of being the head of the family, being the husband, being the leader, uh, my, my macho masculinity, because basically she was implying by that statement, if you don't agree with me and let me do what I want and you agree with mom, then you're cowering and backing down because you're afraid of how she's going to re react to your, to your decision. And I laughed because I knew the teenage manipulative tactic that she was trying to do. But if I was in the flesh and in the Western way of thinking, I would have pulled up my belt, took a deep breath and said, well, yeah, by golly, you're right. I'm the man. I can put my foot down and I have the final say in everything. And, um, you know, uh, yeah, my wife and I would have eventually gotten in an argument because I let my pride take over. But I told my daughter, I said, no, I'm not afraid of your mother. It's just that she feels she has a certain conviction about this particular thing you want to do. Me, it doesn't matter either way, but we're one, and I'm going to side with her because I know that if the shoe was on the other foot, that if there was something that I had a deep conviction about, uh, I would want her to side with me and to back me up and agree with me. And I said, me and your mother are a team. We're one. You know, we're we're going to always agree with each other and side on the, the, the same thing, you know, regarding uh, – issues concerning you. So I said it has nothing to do with fear. You know, it, it has everything to do with with um uh you know avoiding an argument and and uh um honoring and respecting someone's particular convictions about an issue. But if I would have let my sense of pride not losing face and not appearing weak in front of my daughter, if I was to give in to those manipulative tactics that she was wittingly or unwittingly using, I could have, you know, uh, created a, a big fuss and a big argument in the family. It says avoiding a quarrel is honorable. After all, a stubborn fool can start a fight. It takes more strength 
to say no than it is to agree with somebody. It takes more strength to walk away from a fight than it is to participate in a fight. It takes more strength and self-control uh, to avoid an argument than it is to participate in one. So, you know, I've heard it said before, choose which hill you want to die on. In other words, you know, is the battle really worth it? Is the fight really worth it? You know, choose wisely what you decide to, you know, put your foot down and draw the line on. Because a lot of arguments is just piddly. It's neither here nor there. It doesn't really matter in the long run. Nobody's going to remember it in a few days anyway, whatever. And so, you know, is it something that's just going to uh, become worse and start a fight and uh, just become festered and embroiled? Or is it something that it doesn't really matter and you can just, uh, it's not worth it and just walk away. Avoiding a quarrel is honorable. After all, any stubborn fool can start a fight. Hey, thanks so much for listening. Go out there and have a great day. Shalom and Shavuot Tov. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press the like button as well as the subscribe button if you haven't done so already and the notification bell that'll let you know every time I make a new video. And don't forget to share this with a friend. Also, visit our website at abrahamsdescendants.com. Thanks. Shalom.